Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, I will explain to you how we can turn a simple screenshot like this into something looking like this. All of that in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. I am adding my screenshot on the timeline and I'm duplicating it to amount of times that I want to be displayed based on the elements that I'm gonna be having. I'm using four elements, so I'm duplicating it three times so I can have four media files. I'm highlighting the top one and I'm using the corp tool in the inspector so I can corp anything that I'm not needing from this element. So for the top element I'm keeping just the banner. Then I'm highlighting my second element and I'm corping everything except my logo and my name. I'm keeping that in the center and I'm going to the third one. I'm highlighting it and I'm corping it again until I have only my thumbnails of my recent videos and I'm corping everything else. You don't need to be precise with the corping, I'll explain that later why I'm keeping just a tiny bit from the background. I'm doing the same for my fourth element which is my other four videos. Now I'm highlighting all of my elements and I'm moving them one slot up so I can leave video slot number one free for my next element which is in the generators and that is a solid color. I'm leaving it on video slot number one, I'm highlighting it and I'm going in the inspector. Now we are gonna change the color of that background. I'm selecting pick screen color and I'm selecting the color background which is on my YouTube channel. After picking the color I'm noticing that it's a little bit off so that's why I'm darkening the color from here a little bit more so that it can be the same as the background. When finished I'm clicking OK and now I'm having just the four elements. Now I'm gonna go to everything except the solid color, right click and creating a new compound clip. That will help us. Moving on with the next step, I'm selecting the first one, I'm selecting right click and I'm opening in the fusion page. It's very simple in here, you just need a transform node. I'm gonna increase the size from the inspector by using this transform. I'm gonna adjust the position of that banner, so I'm leaving it right here. And once you have chosen the place on which this element would like to be, you can go on the timeline and let's say on frame number 30. I want this to be displayed, so I'm creating a keyframe next to center XY. Then I'm going in the beginning of the timeline and I'm moving in towards the left side because I want to appear from the left. Now when I play it, you can see that it's statically moving with these two keyframes to the center. We can of course improve that. We're enabling the spline tab. We're also enabling the transform one. We're clicking this icon so we can view all of our keyframes. We're selecting both of them and pressing S on the keyboard so we can smooth out our keyframes. So far we're having something that is looking like this and we're gonna make just a tiny bit of adjustments. So I'm grabbing this keyframe and I'm pulling it right here. I'm creating something that is close to easing out. I'm previewing so I can check if I like it or not. If I like it, I go to settings, I enable motion blur, I increase the quality to four and shutter angle to 230. I like what I see and now I can continue with my second element. I'm also opening it in the fusion type I'm adding a transform node, I'm increasing the size of that element and I also noticed that I forgot a paint node here, it's not important, I was just experimenting something. Then you can adjust the position of that element. Once you set up the position you can go on the timeline, you want to appear a little bit later than the first one. So the first one is appearing on frame 30, this one is gonna appear a little bit later, I'm creating a keyframe there, then I'm going backwards 20 or 30 frames and selecting there. And this is my first keyframe appearing from the right side. It should be something looking like this, appearing from the right side. While transform one is highlighted, I'm going to spline again. I'm enabling the transform one. I'm viewing all the keyframes. I'm pressing S and I'm moving this keyframe right here so I can have an easing out curve. If you like what I see, you can go to settings, finalize it by increasing the quality and shutter angle on motion blur. And now you're having something like this and you can continue with both of the other elements. So I'm highlighting my third element, I'm right clicking and I'm going in the fusion page. Open in fusion page, then highlight media in, selecting the transform icon, going in the inspector, increasing the size again, leaving it on the place on which you like to see, then going on the timeline and place it a little bit further than the previous one. I'm gonna make around 15 frames difference between the showing up from each element. I'm creating a keyframe there and the starting frame is always 20 or 30 frames before the ending. For this third element is gonna show up from the left side again. We don't want everything to show up from the same side. So the first one is showing from the left, the second one is showing from the right. 
third one from the left and the fourth one on the right again. I'm highlighting everything. Again, in here we're using the spline tab, we're adding an easing out curve and when you're ready you can enable motion blur and increase the quality and shutter angle. You can preview once again to see what you're having and then move on with your last step. Open it in Fusion page, add a transform node, go to the inspector, increase the size and adjust the position of the element on the place which you want to be displayed. This one is going to be shown in frame 120, I'm creating a keyframe there, then I'm going 20-30 frames earlier and I'm moving it towards the right side because I want to appear from there and we're having this static 2 keyframes slide. I'm enabling the transform in the spline, selecting both keyframes and creating an easing out curve. Then going in the settings, motion blur, increase quality shoulder angle and you're having something like this. And after making this, you can notice that there's a little bit of problem. Our four clips with the other four are kind of off. They are not straight behind each other. So I'm highlighting one of them and I'm going in the edit tab and I'm increasing the values of position X until they're matching. And now when I play it through, you can see that everything is showing up exactly in the same order. The edit on the position X is not affecting the transform, which is in the fusion tab. Now I'm gonna show you something else. If you want to use another kind of animation, in the spline tab, you can right click, go to ease and you can pick one of these. Let's first say, for example, I'm picking this which is Outback Cubic, which is a preset for the keyframes. If you don't like this, you can also go back, go to Ease and pick some out of keyframes preset. You can try also back in Cubic, but I personally like the previous one. I'm previewing one more time the previous one. You can see how it's going. I really like this one also. So if you want to make everything like this, you just have to right click on the other elements, open it in Fusion tab, right click Ease and then Outback Cubic, and then it's done. It's already having a motion blur, so you don't need to change it again. You can go back to other elements, right click, go to ease and use Outback Cubic. Now let's make the last one, right click, open infusion page, then right click on the spline, go to ease and Outback Cubic. Now let's preview everything and see how it's gonna look. This is the Outback Cubic look and the second one is going to be our first try with the easing out. A nice way on how you can improve your screenshots display. You can use also other types of presets on the keyframes from here or you can make it custom for yourself. And you can use this for screenshots not only for YouTube, you can use it also for Instagram. All kind of other platforms on which you want to display something. And I think this is a nice method on how you can improve your screenshot preview. Also, don't forget to check out this video right here. I hope you're gonna like it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.